Hey guys, welcome to Foreplay Podcast, a safe space for all things sex. Remember, if you're ready for sex, you're ready to talk about it. Welcome to Foreplay Podcast, everybody. We're back. Another day, another dollar. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. We're loving it. We're happy to be here. It's gorgeous outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have a friend with us. Yeah, we Hello. do. Those of you watching on YouTube yeah. can see baby bean on the couch between yeah. Emily and Maddie and her name is Hazel yeah my little hazelnut she is 16 <sighs> oh my fucking god I love her so much <laughs> she's the senior assistant at this company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and she's literally like not even the size of one of my thighs yeah she's, she's teensy, yeah. tiny just a little sweet bean. I know and I've had her since she was a little baby what's new so i had a video sent to me from a friend and it really like sparked a thought in my brain to try and shift my sex it was like this video talking about um pleasure-based sex or like orgasm-based sex Mm -hmm. and how orgasm-based sex can often make your partner feel like obligated or make you feel obligated or whoever's involved feel obligated to like get to a certain point to perform at a certain level and it was just like a good reminder because I feel like always I try to make my my sex pleasure based but this video gave specific points like for example in like pleasure based sex nobody's body parts have to look or be a certain way and that will apply to even like an erection Mm because it doesn't have to be Mm -hmm. penetration based you know what I mean Mm -hmm. it's just about like pleasure and androgynous zones and like making somebody feel good so orgasm isn't the goal but Mm -hmm. it's a good reminder and it's something that I'm going to try and incorporate more regularly in when I get fucked when I fuck Mm. when I do both you know and so what does that look like okay so I feel like for me it's cultivating foreplay that I actually enjoy Because I often, like, you're a big massage person. We've talked Mm -hmm. about that a million times. I I don't really, like, like, I'll kiss. But kissing's kind of boring to me. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? same. It's just, like, a little bit monotonous after a while. And then I'm just Mm -hmm. like, okay, take my clothes off. But actually taking the time and, like, I feel like I like performing whatever that would look like foreplay on somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gets me going. But I usually, like... I don't know. I don't know. So, so being intentional about what we do and like whether we're going into penetrative sex and like paying attention to my partner's nipples more, I guess, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but learning what that means for me as well, which is, I think a big part of it. And is that like a conversation that you and your partner had together? We actually haven't had it very, very recently. We've had it in the past a bunch, but, um, I think it's more like, for me to learn about myself and that it will lead to a conversation no matter what because like like I said like I don't really know what foreplay turns me on other Mm -hmm. than like doing something to somebody else you know what I mean and I want to learn about like my androgynous zones and like find pleasure in those ways rather than like focus on orgasming Mm -hmm. because orgasming during partner sex is always really like taxing for me but it's also immediately where my brain goes yeah you know what I mean Mm -hmm. but Hmm. it'll be interesting so I'll keep you updated yeah I'm excited to see that shift it'll be cool you know or try to have sex with like no orgasming and no penetration if I orgasm whatever it's a bonus but like no penetration just like Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. exploring Mm -hmm. so we'll see how it goes I hate when it's like unintentional but you're fucking and you just like can't get there and yeah. you're so pissed off yeah. <laughs> like I, okay literally like go masturbate in the bathroom I'm like I gotta go like yeah, I need yeah. to get this out right Seriously. now that <laughs> was literally my like sex with my old partner it was like that all the time mm-hmm. it would be like like almost there and because you guys know like I yeah. never mm-hmm. orgasmed until I was like 21 yeah mm-hmm. and um yeah, it was just like almost there, and I'm like, "This is it, yeah. <laughs> this is it." Yeah, and then it, nothing fucking happened yeah. every time, and it's just like, okay, cool. And then when I actually like orgasm for the first time, I was like, "Oh wow, like I get it." <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? oh my god, yeah. <laughs> It's like listening to a really good song, but then the beat never drops. So you're just kind of like, huh? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, what is that TikTok song that's like that? Mm-hmm. The sound? And it's like, scratch that. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I feel like because of that, like, 
um, evolution between like never really coming during sex and then coming mm-hmm. during sex, it's like my brain just instantly goes there for myself. And yeah, then yeah. I focus too much about like receiving it properly to mm-hmm. get to orgasm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like not about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. No, I totally get that. That's cool. Uh, I want to hear your story. Okay. My story is really not that exciting, but I just thought it was kind of funny. So uh, I think this is a couple weeks ago. It was my primary partner and I were just at home, you know, enjoying some food. The dog wasn't home, which gave us the freedom to have sex anywhere we wanted. You love it. Um, so whatever, we're downstairs on the couch and we're watching, oh, what the fuck were we watching? Probably like Love Island or like some reality <laughs> TV show. <laughs> And we're we're drinking champagne, we're arguing over like the drama in the show, good stuff, good mm-hmm. banter, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um anyways, and we start whatever, initiating making out, whatever. Initiate and you don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alexa tells me to <laughs> marshmallow head on. Yeah, literally. He just whips it out from behind the couch. Yeah. <laughs> um but he, so he's sitting up like on the couch like this and I'm like ass in his face. So like kind of 69ing, but we're not laying down. So yeah. it's kind of awkward, whatever. Okay. Going hard. He's eating me out. And then all of a sudden, like, I like kind of like do a little twitch and I like my whole body like goes back and I, my outer lips get scraped by his tooth. Oh. Cause I literally like <laughs> rammed my fucking pussy into his teeth and I'm like, ow. Ow, 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 He's like, are you okay? I'm like, no, no, fucking okay. Oh, my God. And whatever, we just, like, glaze over it. Like, I kind of just, like, hold, hold my fucking coochie for a second. Yeah. And then we continue. And then afterwards, I was like, that was your fucking fault. Like, you shouldn't be putting your teeth out there. He's like, you're the one that tw- you're twitching. You you put your pussy in my face. <laughs> it, yeah, that was the whole story. It was just, it really fucking hurt. Luckily, did not break skin. Oh, ah, yeah, good. yeah, Thank yeah. The Just Lord. a giant pussy bruise. Yeah, it fucking hurt. Did it hurt the next day? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Like, oh, it was really? It was not like a gentle graze. It was like I, like, jabbed the tooth Ooh. into my fucking pussy. It just makes me think, like, could you imagine, though, if your partner had braces? Oh, oh. no. No. Just the stitches. Oh. Stitches. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I went tubing... And I um, yeah. Oh, yeah. cut the webbing in my tongue. That's oh, like what it would be like. That's oh, nasty as fuck. So oh, yeah, wow. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. Yeah, so no sitting 69 yeah. is the moral of the story. <laughs> Probably not the Like were you idea. in like down dog kind of thing? Yeah. This is like, what I picture. Yes. Like okay. pretty much like that. So you're like down dog in it. But yeah. were you giving him head also? Uh, yes, I was. Okay, what? so you were down dog in it on the couch. Yes. Oh, I, we were like a little more what? stretched out, so I wasn't so like... Yeah. Yeah. That is bendy. You. Not yeah. really. No, <laughs> I, I promise it wasn't. <laughs> okay, so kind of like had an orgy. <laughs> kind of like had like an orgy. Casually. <laughs> wow, okay, so it was wild and like fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. But like, okay, so went to this um, patio rooftop Airbnb party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me and like seven girls rented this um, penthouse in downtown, which was fucking mm-hmm. awesome. It was like $1,300 for the oh, night. We love That's, it. But it was awesome. Like, hot tub on the rooftop. And uh, you just, like, felt like you were somewhere else. Except mm-hmm. we also saw, like, a car accident. <laughs> that lasted, like, a full hour that we were... Anyways. And then, um, yeah, just, like, everyone was in, like, the sexiest clothes. And we're taking photos and, like, you know... But it was, like, all kind of normal-ish. Like, it wasn't... Like, the vibes. Like, okay, so everyone knew, like, generally across the board, you guys were coming to fuck. No. Well, oh. not necessarily. Like, oh. me, me and, like, a couple other people kind of had, like, some, like, sexy truth or dare. Okay. A couple months prior. So we were, like... And we were when we were talking about it, we were, like, oh, this will be, like, like a sexy party. Like, we'll all... Yeah, because, yeah, anyways, so it was kind of, like, going to be, like, a sexy party, yeah. but I was 
actually surprised that a literal orgy just broke out happened and i was like <laughs> like fuck like four people oh so you were like, oh, at first you were in it you were just like it's happening no i kind of facilitated it oh okay <laughs> tell us about that I, that I brought the sensory deprivation stuff because we were talking about the sensory deprivation mm-hmm. station so yeah. i was like sweet we can like have somebody tied up and do like the sensory deprivation on them and oh. um it quickly turned into like multiple people on this person (laughs) and um, just got so like hot. And then like fingers were inside Mm -hmm. her and like, then it just kept unraveling. Mm -hmm. And then so orgasmed and then we just like switched person. (laughs) And then it just kind of like rotated and then we were using the fantasy dildo. Yes. yes. And um, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Is there GoPro footage? Yeah. <laughs> no. But it would have been like very hot. I can very, I very can hot. picture it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Were you on this like patio balcony while this is happening? No, we out were in, the open? in we were in our room. Okay. Okay. And like I was, yeah, also very surprised. Like I thought it was just going to be, like, me demonstrating it mm-hmm. on my partner. And then... And then it wasn't? And then it just so quickly wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was, like, very hot. And, like, it was so... It was nice because we were all, like, just, like, really good pals. And, like, it was fine. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. It was, like, weird. That's fantastic. That's a bucket list thing for sure. Top takeaway from your orgy. Mm-hmm. Uh, top takeaway... Is that you can have that experience with friends, yeah, and like you, you're just pals, you yeah. know. Like it was just really fun, mm-hmm. and it we just like we love some platonic fingering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. honestly, like that's yeah. the move. Yeah. Like it was just actually like really nice, and it was just like you know we were all like taking turns, like flushing. Yeah, go on, yeah. go on, say it with and, your chest, yeah. yeah, it was good though. Yeah, yeah it was like. Very, very hot. Yep. Okay. And then if you would, if you could orchestrate your next orgy, what's, what's, give me the whole plan. Oh, I don't know. Because even I was talking to it with my friend and it was kind of like, it needs to be that like organic kind of thing. Like, Mm -hmm. because if it's forced and it like, if, if it was forced and like legit facilitated, yeah. I think it would just kind of take away from, like, the playfulness. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I like that, though. That's a good tip. Yeah. You know, granted, every time we've tried to plan a threesome, something doesn't go as planned anyway, Mm. so I feel like that carries on, you know? Nothing ever goes as planned with threesomes. Yeah, (laughs) so you might as well just not plan it. Yeah, there you go. The vibes are there. That's That's sick. And, like, we've hung out since, and, you know, it's not like we have an orgy every time. (laughs) So. No, I like it. Honestly, it's like what happens at summer camp stays at summer camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, for the past, like, while, I don't know exactly how long, but let's just say months, I can't come by myself without, like, a visual stimulant, like porn. Yeah. And I've been watching really fucked up porn, too. Like, Same. just, I'm with you. like, I just, like, I need it to be, like, really fucked up to get off. But today <laughs> came without porn. Oh, wow. And it was good. And I don't know why it happened. Yeah. I would think I was just too lazy to, like, search what I wanted. Yeah. And I just, like, forced it to happen. It was good. It was oh, good. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, I broke through the barrier. Yeah, it's a hard barrier to be at, especially yeah. when you like fucked up porn. Yeah, oh, I really like fucked up <laughs> porn. Like, I, yeah, I could tell you the names right now. <laughs> I need to hear one. Even if it's off the record for the pod, I no, just No, it can be that. on. Like, I, oh, my God, Janice Griffith. Like, I can't stop. Like, sh- you got to fucking I'm search sorry. that shit when you get home. <laughs> I will. will. Yeah, Yeah. she's so fine. So I don't know why, but I always will watch porn before I have a nap. Like that's like my pre-nap always. Like I don't usually watch porn before bed. Yeah. And like and yeah, I love the fucked up shit. (laughs) And it's just like always before I have a nap, it just like songs me out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's noon on the Monday, on a Monday, and you're watching like CNC. (laughs) You're like, how did I get here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. 
Yeah. Good for you, though. It's a, it's a hard hole to be in. Feeling good. Yeah. Probably going to watch porn tonight, but... <laughs> I, I mean, you treat, win some, you lose some. Yeah, yeah exactly. Flows, you exactly. Know? I'm reading this new book. It's called Den of Vipers. It's a real book. A real published book. Yeah. In case y'all think I'm fucked up, it's a real book. Yeah. Um, basically, it's about this, like, these four brothers who are in a gang, and they, like, kidnap this girl, and she, like, falls in love with them. <laughs> But they're so fucked in the head, my guys. Like, mm-hmm. so fucked in the head. Like, this one guy tortured this man in front of her, and then they started making out after him. <laughs> and I was like, why am I into this? Yeah, yeah. literally. That's like, good. Okay, let's pump the brakes and then assess this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I feel you on the, the fucked up porn. You know? Mm-hmm. You just I gotta... love that you read smut. It's yeah. just so mm-hmm. fun. It's like my yeah, guilty pleasure. That's hot. And with a good plot, you can't get better than that. Come on. It's yeah. true. It's true. Two it's words with packet. one stone. Exactly. Sticky, icky, filthy, filthy, dirty, nasty, nasty center of it all. Okay. So we're talking about open relationships and jealousy. This is a long story, so <sighs> buckle in. A couple breaths before. So a couple weeks ago, my primary partner and I kind of had the conversation of, you know, what were we lacking in our relationship? What did we need need to do to bring that spark back in? And at the time, we came to the conclusion that um, we got married super young, so we were kind of missing that like before the marriage aspect, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So whatever, my partner and I like downloaded Tinder and. Um, he had hung out with someone, but like he didn't sleep with her or whatever. And then that, that lasted for about a week, just like talking to people. And throughout the week, I'm like, I'm fine with this. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not like flipping back and forth. And the whole time I was communicating this with him. Cause I was like, I'm not going to just hide how I feel, even if it's changing every single day. Um, so I know I probably gave him a bit of whiplash with that. But then it all kind of came to a stop when I was like, hey, listen, I don't know if I'm ready for you to actually sleep with someone. And he was upset with this Mm -hmm. because I had been so back and forth, but then also being like, yes, I'm okay with this. So he was kind of like, what the hell? Whatever. So he had a conversation about it and kind of just, he just explained to me like, It wasn't that he needed a romantic relationship. It was purely just, like, physical. He just wanted to experience, like, sleeping with other people. And I was like, okay, uh, like, is that something because of our relationship? Like, where is that coming from? We kind of just talked about that. Um, And then we came to the conclusion that we're not going to, like, talk to anyone else. We're just going to work on us. Mm -hmm. But I... I didn't think I was very jealous until it kind of came down to it. And I was like, oh, no, no, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Mm -hmm. Um, But we had a conversation about it. We worked it out. And our relationship has definitely been much better in the past few weeks. And, like, obviously, you have your good days, you have your bad days, but it's getting there. Um, But, yeah, I would say that's, like, my most recent experience with, like, open relationships and jealousy and how I kind of worked through that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah. I just have a question on like, how was your conversation? Like, how did it go? How was it like received by your partner? Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, at first he was like upset, mad, just like annoyed, Mm -hmm. Um, which I can get to an extent. Um, But I tried to explain very clearly why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And I think he understood that. Yeah. Um, and we took that and then just tried to come up with like a compromise that we were both comfortable with. Um, but he wasn't, after we talked for a while, he wasn't angry. He was just like, okay, like, what do I need to do? What, what do we need to do? And what do I need to do as myself, um, to feel more secure in, in our own relationship? Yeah. Um, cause it's not like open relationships. It's not ever going to happen again. Like if there's a very large possibility that that could happen down the road. And I think what I was struggling with was more of something I was battling internally yeah. instead of something mm-hmm. he was, um, forcing onto me yeah. and then just 
because our relationship wasn't doing the best at the time. We just needed to focus that energy on ourselves first. Um, but yeah. Having those little arguments, I guess, with your partner. Yeah. And it's just like kind of something that was like constantly coming up. Yeah. So my roommate actually recommended this book. Yeah. And it's Be the Person You Want to Find. So it's by Sherry Huber. Um, also author of There's Nothing Wrong With You. That's a really good book too. But anyway, so yeah. So this book is all about like communication and like dissecting the jealousy. So like this actually might, well, I was actually going to get all of us a copy Aww. because it's so good. Just waiting till we get a good paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing at a time. Yeah. But um, this is a book that everybody needs to read. Yeah. It's like just how to disidentify with different identities that you've created in your head and yeah. like what you have attached to certain things that like doesn't really serve you and yeah. like what you're responding to out of conditioning from like past. Yeah. Um, relationships ch like childhood stuff like that and it just is so good for communication with like your partner too because it goes about like okay well sherry um plans a date doing this and her husband bob plans a date doing this yeah. on the same day they're both disappointed they don't mm -hmm. want to do what each other wants to do and it's like well if i don't you don't see life the way I see life. Maybe we're not meant to be. And like how you kind of go through dissecting what you're actually feeling. Yeah. And it's, yeah, same with jealousy. Like it goes into jealousy and why, why, what triggers what and where that root is. Yeah. That's cool. Wow, it's that's really cool. fantastic. So be the person you want to find. Yeah. That's really cool. I feel yeah. like that's really good advice too, because like to actually like do some research on like your emotional development, I feel like is always a good idea, but there's another book then that comes to mind and it's um the ethical slut. And I don't remember mm. who it's from, but I gave a copy to a friend of mine, I feel like three years ago and I don't fucking know if I'll ever get it back, but I did find it at um, value village one day. So it's mm. super accessible. Um, but uh it's about like ethical non-monogamy, which I feel like mm -hmm. is something this is a perfect time to like talk about that. And to be honest, I don't know what it means to be ethically non-monogamous because I am just figuring it out as I go. Mm -hmm. But I think something important is to, or like, a, like an important theme in that topic would be to be, you know, processing your feelings and not like dumping it onto your partner, especially when you're, I don't know, mm -hmm. trying, I don't know, trying to, shift your your thinking outside of traditional monogamy you know what I mean when all mm -hmm. this other stuff could come up but um just like sex too like if you're fucking other people I know we're very much so like in our 20s and we're like get whatever you want but like knowing that I don't know like there's a give and a take mm -hmm. and just like being able to look <clears throat> back and be like okay I treated that person with respect even though I was just in it for sex you know mm -hmm. but in terms yeah. of jealousy I never, I, I think more than anything, I would be on the receiving end. Same with you. Cause I've never really found myself to be a jealous person. Mm -hmm. And, and the only thing I've really experienced in terms of a relationship has been like, I feel like way long time ago, my partner would get not really like jealous, but mm -hmm. it was more insecure, but mm -hmm. it would kind of manifest as jealousy. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, it would affect like what I would wear out to clubs and like silly mm -hmm. things yeah. like that. And yeah. we've come such a long way that now when it's jealousy, it's like, I don't know, like non-monogamy, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, okay. Are you comfortable with, with seeing other people sleeping with other people? Like, what does that look like? And, and I don't know the f few times in the past where I found myself jealous of my partner and like the person that he's like seeing or whatever at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, it's always just kind of, something that like there's a part of me that's like scared that they have a better relationship than we do mm -hmm. you know what I mean or it's that part of you know my partner that I don't I can't really speak to or resonate with but that mm -hmm. other person does that for them you mm -hmm. know what I mean and then I'm like yeah. and then I'm like do you love me can we talk about it I feel jealous and then it's <laughs> fine afterwards but yeah never been a big big like I don't know 
I was going to say possession person, but I don't think that's the right word. But I don't know. What about you? Or do you find yourself easily jealous? Yeah, I was just going to say I like on jealousy. I don't think for me personally in a relationship, I've felt a lot of jealousy, but I know that I have felt jealousy in regards to like just other people and even like their lives and like money and what they're doing and blah, blah, blah. But I always find for me, I'm like, you know, they always say jealousy is a disease or whatever, but I always try and turn that jealousy into like a motivation for me Mm -hmm. rather than like just sitting there angry about like, my life isn't this way. Like, why isn't it like Mm -hmm. that? And being like, this is like something I want to achieve. What can I do to change that? And I think for me, like resonating that into like a relationship, I think if you're in a situation, whatever, both of you guys, if on the receiving end and giving end, like Mm -hmm. if you're with someone and you're feeling jealous, just understand that that is an emotion, but don't get caught in the jealousy. Maybe try and make that a motivation to like for your relationship to be better. And like, if you're with a partner who's gaslighting you about Mm -hmm. jealousy, you're not in a good relationship. Like if they're not helping you with that jealousy to make it something better, or like Mm -hmm. make your communication stronger, then it's just going to end in shambles you know what I mean (laughs) to build off of that because what you said was perfect Mm -hmm. um like my primary partner and I basically went after we had that conversation he was like okay what do I need to do to make our relationship Mm -hmm. better so you're more secure in our relationship yeah Yeah. um and that was great I I didn't expect it but I was pleasantly surprised by it Mm -hmm. and I think that's what you have to do if you Mm -hmm. you just have to talk about it yeah I know I mean I'm not a perfect person. I definitely have acted petty and like mm-hmm. be out of jealousy. Oh, for yeah, sure. But if you can kind of isolate that and talk and talk about it, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. then maybe you can kind of work through it mm-hmm. yeah. and work through it with your partner, not just by yourself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And seriously, though, like how, how, cause we all have jealousy aside, we all have insecurities and mm-hmm. in something like that where you're, I feel like this goes back to possession again. I don't think that's the right way to put it. But when you're like sharing somebody that you love so much or like Mm -hmm. allowing them to just like kind of open that door or what have you, like it's going to bring up a lot. So um, to have someone support you rather than kind of like pull away Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. it's, you know, like you deserve to feel like that. It is an insecurity and like it's it's a normal thing to feel. And I feel like even if you don't feel it in relationships, it comes Mm -hmm. up in all other aspects of your life. Yeah, totally. definitely. And to add on to all of this, <laughs> also the like when you were saying pulling away, yeah. mm-hmm. that is something that I have definitely been guilty of. Mm-hmm. And um, because I think at a certain point, I just get so pissed off. Yeah. And <clears throat> I also want to bring up like, you should really look into what attachment style you have yeah. mm-hmm. because it's really important to know because you're if you have um, an anxious attachment, if you have an avoidant attachment, yeah. mm-hmm. or if you are a secure attachment, it's good to know because then you can like look like there's a book and it's called Attachment Styles. No, it's called Attached. Mm-hmm. And um, it's such a good book. It talks about each different one and what one might need and like it just dissects it. And yeah. then you're mm-hmm. aware of it and it tells you solutions on how to process it in your mind mm-hmm. and just like have a uh, like a starting point at yeah. where to go yeah. it is such a good book and I've yeah I've read it um I read it on a an audiobook yeah. form so Ooh. if yeah if you want like more of a way to dissect it and you kind of like think like I have avoided tendency tendencies mm-hmm. for sure so it's good to know like what? Yeah. My therapist is definitely going to be hearing about this in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I'll just it's, show her the episode and yeah. like watch it. Yeah. It's so interesting though too because like even like with you guys like mm-hmm. is that okay to talk about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. Because <laughs> um, you're talking about attachment styles and then we're mm-hmm. talking about like you and your primary partner and like obviously it's okay for sorry, like. Sorry pause. Yeah. We're just not talking about it because we don't know how to without making it like weird. Oh because yeah. we're literally we sitting yeah, right don't next get, to like, each other. Into no it, but, no no that's yeah. okay. Yeah, I was just going to be like because attachment styles um it'll reflect because like obviously like this is ah, um obviously like Dylan's okay with you guys being together and like you not wanting to get there yet with Dylan like that's it doesn't have to mean that it's like unfair you know what Mm -hmm. I mean it's just like who people are and if you're okay with that you're okay with that and Mm -hmm. if you're not that's a whole different conversation but like it's a it's crazy we're all very different 
I think it's totally fair to feel jealousy, not only in a monogamous relationship, but as well as an open relationship. Yeah, and yeah. it's totally valid. Yeah. And your feelings are your feelings, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's just something no matter what you need to have that communication with your partner. Yeah. Um, and that's that. Like, that's what you got to work through it. Yeah. If not, it's, there's no point. And, oh, sorry. No, sorry. And, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, <laughs> but I do and, like, even, even if it's, it's pissing you off, even if it's angry, also, like, be angry or whatever. Yeah. Feel that emotion and, like, process it and also process it with mm-hmm. your partner. But definitely, like, reassure them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like... Like, yeah, like don't, yeah, don't be a, a dick. A dick, and you know we're all dicks sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> oh, think, definitely. Yeah. I think the moral of this conversation in general, which is funny because we haven't really like said it in mm-hmm. these words, and maybe I'm just being a dickhead, but like if you're planning to love somebody mm-hmm. in any capacity, mm-hmm. expect jealousy. Mm-hmm. Fully, yeah, thoroughly. totally yeah. friendships. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. everything. I get a little jealous of you guys. Ooh. <laughs> In any aspect of relationships, I at least for me, I'm because I'm a super self aware person. So yeah. when I feel jealous, I'm like, "Fuck, like, yeah. why am I feeling like this? Like, mm-hmm. shut up!" Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I have to process it instead of just like suppressing it and being like, "No, that's not there." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'm like embarrassed, or I like am angry at myself for feeling that emotion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you know, in the back of your head, you're like, "Okay, why am I jealous?" <laughs> you want to know? Yeah. I know when you're jealous and you haven't processed it yet. This is you, I literally don't even care. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> like, I literally don't care. Like, no, like I just like I'm just supportive. It's fine. It's true. But, <laughs> <That's> so, <funny. laughs> but it's just it's shutting down. Well, yeah. it's like fair enough. You know, you get scared, but it's like something that will pass and yeah. is okay to be like vulnerable with the people around you about. But mm-hmm. I want to know, just like in like a fun little way, because I feel like we get, we talked about serious stuff. We talked about our hearts. Mm-hmm. But um, what's the silliest thing you've ever done out of jealousy? I mean, for me, I'm just trying to think of like situations that I've like actually been jealous. And yeah. I think I want to say I definitely have had situations in friendships where I've been jealous Mm -hmm. like whether that be like my friend was like hanging out with other friends like without me or whatever but I think my maybe like petty way is like hanging out with like their friends (laughs) and getting close with like someone else you know what I mean like getting super close with them and then trying to be like oh I'm with them you know what I mean like that kind of thing I love her yeah you guys are friends you're like yeah 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 exactly (laughs) that's so funny yeah Uh, I feel like um I don't often get jealous like that like my partner's spending time with another partner because we haven't really been seeing anyone outside of each other for a while. But mm-hmm. um, I, I very much so am jealous about like how much my partner's coworkers see him versus how much mm. I see him. I can relate to that. 100%. So I just, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I miss him all the fucking time and it's ridiculous. But I think this is when we were moving, but I got mad at him for something. And it was just like this whole big culmination of like, I don't know, just not being able to communicate properly because we don't fucking see each other and just being mm-hmm. sick and tired of it. Mm-hmm. We had yes. ice cream cones from the grocery store and there was like ice cream in the fridge and I don't like ice cream cones, so they're definitely for him. But I was mad at him and I had them and I just squished them and then I put them back and I was like, he can look at that later. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, that's God. me shitting on your parade a little bit. And he could still eat them, but they weren't just gonna be so funny. I feel like it's a harmless way for me to be a crazy ass Aries. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like some oh people punch God. walls. Some people just crush ice cream cones, and then I just let yeah, it go. That's he finds hilarious. it, I'd be like, "Oh, wonder how that happened." <laughs> okay, mine comes out in my god complex, <laughs> which I definitely have. And it's like one day I'm like, I am the hottest human being in the world, <laughs> and then five minutes later I'm like, I want to kill myself. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, like especially back when this happened with my primary partner. I would, like, every time we would go out, I would, like, try to look really good. Yeah. And I would, he would, like, look at me, and I'd be like, yes, like, I know I look good. Like, thank you. Yeah, like you Every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a little bitchy, it. but. But you're like, thank you. Yeah, like. like join <laughs> the club. I am the hottest bitch out there. Like. That's so fucking funny. Time That's for you amazing. to realize it. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Like, okay, BBLs. <laughs> Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I think it's a little bit healthy. Get your blood boiling. Yeah, a bit, you know it's what I mean. True. When you're 
not when you're jealous, but when someone else is jealous and they're like kind of sharing that with you and you're just like, cause you know, it's jealousy based on an insecurity that somebody needs to process a little bit more and you're here to support them, but you're not here to baby them. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> uh-huh. You're like, they're like, can we talk? You're like, you're going to have to book that in with my secretary. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Honestly, yeah. I'm here for it a little I bit. Am, I'm here for it because that is rarely me. Yeah. I'm usually always chipper, yeah. always positive, and you're looking like, at <laughs> all the good little things. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm really pissed off, I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, it it is scary. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, And like... I don't even blink and I yeah. don't show any emotion. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just... I, I hold my breath I'm the whole hearing time. What, I'm <laughs> hearing what you say, and I'm picking out every little thing. <laughs> yeah. You You're know? hearing what you already prepared to hear. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is why. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, that's showing through. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. That's your Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, there's been a few of those, but. We love it, though. Mm-hmm. We gotta have both sides, because it's an understanding. You do understand that person. You know, truly. And kind of, to be fair, me and my old partner never fought. Yeah. Never, mm-hmm. ever. And fighting is a little new. Yeah. <laughs> of, like, like we just, I just, we didn't have that. So, and I don't, yeah, I don't know if that's a good or bad, but. You know, on the same note as jealousy. Hello, sweet pea, do you want to come up this way? No. On the same note as jealousy, I think fighting is normal but not to be like romanticized mm-hmm. it's like a weird line to walk yeah. because like mm-hmm. i grew up with a shit ton of fighting mm-hmm. and so did my partner and like if we argue he's very much so like stop it right now like we cannot fight you know what i mean like wow. instantly yeah. goes like hands up don't shoot runs away <laughs> and i'm like okay like i know i'm a little bit heated but like it's okay <laughs> we can talk about it you know what yeah. i mean and i don't know i don't know but i think it's a good thing to yeah experience yeah, in my last relationship, um, it we like it was the first relationship I had where it was like screaming at each other. And I'm not a fighter and I'm also not a communicator. So yeah. it's just a very bad things yeah. combination. But he would like gaslight me and tell me that like you're supposed to fight in a relationship and like you're that like that's healthy and like normal and like a way of communication. Like screaming at each yeah, other. Yeah, like screaming fighting? at each other oh fighting. God, and I was hell? like I knew that it wasn't, yeah. but it was just like <laughs> you're like, what are you yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. You're like, is it though? Like, I'm confused. <laughs> no, literally, I. I it was like because my partner and I don't really fight that often. Sometimes mm-hmm. we'll bicker or whatever, but like we, this was like probably about a year ago now. Mm-hmm. But we had this really bad fight, and we were driving together, and he literally. And this may have been rooted in jealousy too, who yeah. even knows, but he got out of my car and he's walking down the street. <laughs> and if you guys know my partner, you know those big winter boots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's walking down the street and I fucking pull over and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, get in the car. Like, come yeah. on. But that was the first time we talked about that, like get up and run versus like figure it out, even though I feel like I get more bad than he does, but whatever. Maybe it's gaslighting, maybe it's Maybelline. We don't know. <laughs> we don't I'm know. trying to be sincere, but yeah. we're talking about the like idea that fighting is normal. And because I feel like that position, that mm-hmm. like power dynamic, I was like, but in no way am I trying to <laughs> gaslight you. I swear to God. Yeah. But I feel like we should be able to talk about this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But slippery slopes. Slippery you know? slopes. Yeah, I had one of those the other day, and yeah, my partner wanted to walk out of the car. And you're like, I'm like, no. <laughs> literally. <laughs> I was literally like, get in the car. Yeah, I totally have fight or flight with yeah. communication and fights. I like, I physically like back up yeah. and sit and they're yeah. like, where are you going? I'm like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, I cannot do this. Yeah. <laughs> My body is literally like... <laughs> Fair enough. Like yeah. we are who we are, and we just yeah. are trying to learn a kind of middle ground. Yeah, somewhere. exactly. Because like, oh god. But then that goes with respecting boundaries. Yeah. Like if you're in a fight and you physically see your partner getting uncomfortable, reassess. Yeah. <laughs> like, Take a quick break. Yeah. Okay. yeah. When they run out of your car, say, okay, let's talk about this. Let's reapproach yeah. this. From like, yeah. Like, doesn't mean you can't not talk about it. Just means reassess. Yeah. See, this yeah. is like toxic of me, but. When a partner is like, we're ta- like we're talking calm, everything's mm-hmm. good, and then they start yelling, I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. Like I'm like from from here to here, I'm like, oh, you pissed me off. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I definitely get big and they often get small. And I don't know if it's just my type, but sometimes I just want to be yelled at. Like someone just put me in my place once. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. I can understand. That's another thing too. Like I feel like some people want 
that like <laughs> chase of jealousy in their relationship. Mm-hmm. And oh. I think it's a healthy feeling to have. Like it's 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 completely normal. Mm-hmm. But to have it as a dynamic, like mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I would never, could never. I like like little jealousy if it's like in person and like some other person's talking to me and yeah. you can tell that they're yeah, like, like little, side eyeing you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? See, and that's just <laughs> yeah. fun. That's a little bit of power yeah. dynamic oh, yeah, going on. Bit. Like we love to see that truly. Yeah. So this was on my birthday. I was very drunk. Mm-hmm. Everyone pretty much left. Like you guys were gone. It was me, G, my other partner, and then two of his friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, one of them knew about us, but one of them didn't. Mm-hmm. The, the really quiet guy, Dylan had like told him, and he was like, "Yeah, cool, like whatever." Mm-hmm. But the other guy didn't know because he's a little, a little different, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so he's hitting on G, mm-hmm. and in my drunk, yeah. in my drunken stupor, I'm like, "You can't, you can't!" Like her roster's full. Her roster's full. Like, you, like <laughs> you can't. Like she's, it's full. Okay. <laughs> like get a fucking message. Yeah. And everyone yeah. else is laughing. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like it heated. <laughs> That's so funny, honestly. Okay, so let me paint a picture for you guys first before I ask a question. Have you guys seen Love is Blind, the TV show? Yes. Mm, No, but I know the premise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically for people who don't know, it's like um, a group of girls, a group of guys, and they meet. Uh, in two separate rooms and there's like a wall between them but they can still hear each other and they have a certain amount of time to get to know each other and if they want to get engaged i have watched this show Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) so basically whatever if they get engaged then they get to see each other for the first time then they go on this little vacation anyways there is this one couple and throughout like the time where they were just talking he's talking about like his sexuality and he was like getting really upset like I don't know if someone could love someone like me which was heartbreaking to hear but he was nervous to tell her and when he did tell her she like got super angry and obviously he was really upset about it um and I was kind of shocked because for a moment I guess I forgot about homophobia and I was like why is it such a big deal like why does it matter was this after they were engaged I don't remember yeah it it was. was and then he told her that he was I think he, 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 no, he just explained his sexuality. We didn't put a label on it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but she was so pissed off. Um, and I was so shocked. So my question to you guys is when, when is the appropriate time to tell your partner? Do you feel the need to tell your partner? Like, what is your take on that? I know exactly the scene you're talking about. I remember that, (laughs) yeah. Freaks out. Literally the craziest thing. The biggest fight. Uh That's so crazy. Yeah, I think that you should probably tell your partner, though, before you get engaged. I mean, I think think that I think that I should know my partner and my partner should know me to that level by that time because we, you know what I mean? But I don't think I don't think it's necessary to tell anyone. I don't think you owe them anything. I don't think so either. But if it doesn't come up, here's my thing. And I've been thinking about this all day is you don't have you you. First of all, you don't owe them an explanation you don't have to tell them but you should want to tell them you should trust them enough to tell them because it's such a large part of who Mm -hmm. you are that you should want your partner to know who you are you know Mm -hmm. but you don't owe them that if you're not comfortable telling them then you don't need to tell them but you Mm -hmm. should I feel like in a healthy relationship you should want to tell them Mm because that would suck to have to hide from your partner Mm -hmm. yeah or and like even if it's just like a nonchalant thing I feel like like I don't know it's for me anyways it's kind of like one of those like I don't know you say something kind of fruity Mm -hmm. yeah you say something kind of fruity to Mm -hmm. see if these new people you're meeting are homophobic or not you know what I mean Mm -hmm. oh yeah you want to like know if they're down with the shits you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and um I feel like that's that's something but you just assume like you Mm -hmm. especially on in a setting like that you're assuming that they are the best version of themselves Mm -hmm. and you have all of this stuff stimulating you around you and mm-hmm. they're kind of setting you up to fail also, which isn't really fair. Yeah. But there we are. I don't know. What what do you think? Yeah, like I don't think it has to be a big like coming out yeah. like I'm gay or I'm bisexual or yeah. whatever it is. But yeah, like for my experiences, um, with people that I've seen, like if past relationships came up, I would just be like and this girl that I saw, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. it would just be like that, and then they'd kind of just, like, oh, and, like, click. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it wasn't, like, a huge, like, by the way, I'm bisexual, yeah. you know what I mean? Because sometimes yeah. it's nerve-wracking, no matter yeah. what. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's true. And we've really kind of, like, 
like gotten past that like awkward kind of phase really fast but and like we kind of just own it but Mm -hmm. they're like we've been lucky to have such big supporters yeah we're lucky to have it be so open with us and like Mm -hmm. there's no shame around it but and that our families were just like either completely open or we haven't even told them yeah both situations yeah Mm -hmm. and it's just not always that way for some people yeah it's Mm -hmm. so we're safe at least yeah yeah, for the most part and we kind of like feel comfortable sharing that but yeah, it's not that way for a lot of people. Yeah, mm-hmm. seriously. But scary. But it everything is shifting though, for sure. Cuz like mm. <laughs> literally everybody I know is <laughs> into both. I was just reading this thing about bisexuality, is that the right word, in 2021 and it was just like the idea of or like I don't know how you would describe it, but that like women, I mean for women specifically, but women have been like sexualized so much in the past like decade yeah. that it mm-hmm. makes sense that so many women are bisexual now because all you saw is these sexual girls on TV yeah. and everything and yeah. people being so sexual like and just seeing these women as like objects basically yeah. right and yeah. now it's just like we're so conditioned that we're like oh my god women are sexual yeah. you know what I mean and, and we kind of talked mm. about this too um like months ago I feel like I think Steph brought it up way back when but um like operating mm-hmm. around women but like through the male gaze mm-hmm. you know what I mean mm-hmm. like all sorts of st- uh, it's it's weird we definitely are conditioned <laughs> in that way and we're also yeah. like down with the shits you know yeah now most of us just don't give a fuck (laughs) about anything labels whatever i I saw this tiktok today and you know the term where it's like a man made by a woman or like you know like written by women so it's like men who are super like by wife energy you know what i'm saying and there was this tiktok of this girl like fake crying and eating ice cream and it was like when you realize like you were made by a man or like you you were like (laughs) You know, written by man. And you're yeah. Like, Dush, dude. yeah. And it's gonna it's like, take so like that's like Sorry, the whole dude. idea of pick me girls kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Very much still operating under the the male gaze, but like I feel like it's a it takes a long time to undo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Definitely. I've never like made that connection before. About wow. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, yeah. it's an interesting thought. Yeah. Oh my god. Of course. Like. I was literally just talking to my mom about this the other day, but I remember that scene in Transformers with Megan Fox. Like, oh I my remember yeah. being like, I am gay. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yep. Jennifer's body. Yeah, like, literally. That one, yeah. that one sent me. Yeah. Truly. Um, but yeah, food for thought. Food for thought, truly. Anyways, so that was the pod, and <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> no, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>